So the BJP Central Election Committee is likely to meet on 29th and the first list of uh, roughly around 90 to 100 candidates could be announced in the next 48 hours is what sources are telling us. Uh, there was a meeting that was held on Saturday, uh, which was chaired by Mr. J.P. Nadda and Home Minister Amit Shah, in which uh, several key states were discussed. Um, Akhilesh Ji, my colleague who tracks the government and the BJP with me, uh, is with us. Akhilesh Ji, so are we to believe that this will be the first list which will be released much before the model code of conduct is in place? Yes, correct, Maria. In fact, this is for the first time that the BJP is going to announce the candidates even before the Lok Sabha elections are announced. We know that in the most likely in the second week of March, the election commission is going to announce the dates for the upcoming Lok Sabha elections. And immediately after that, uh, the model code of conduct will come into force. But this is for the first time that the BJP is going to experiment that, you know, even before the elections are announced, the party is going to come up with the list of the candidates. If you recall, Maria, in the recently held uh, assembly elections in Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan and Telangana, the BJP did the same thing. Uh, it had come up with the list of the candidates even before the election commission had announced the assembly elections. And the reason being is very simple that, you know, the party will give enough time to the candidates, in, especially in those seats which are weak for the BJP, mm. so that they can have enough time to prepare themselves. And uh, especially we are we have been told by the sources that uh, uh, as far as the UP is concerned, uh, the BJP is going to come up with another strategy where you see that Samajadi party mm. has already announced more than 30 candidates. That's so right. party will definitely target those seats hmm. where SP has already announced the candidates so that those candidates have time to counter those candidates. Of so the they are better party. prepared. They are better prepared for that. Okay. And in the first list, we've been told by the sources that uh, of course, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's name will be there. Uh, in the first first name will be there uh, from Varanasi, his constituency in Uttar Pradesh. And of course, uh, Home Minister Amit Shah and senior ministers like Defence Minister Rajnath Singh and Surface Transport Minister Ms. Nitin Gadkari. All these ministers will be figuring in that first list. In that first list. So uh, there, there was a lot of speculation. I'm going to ask about that as well, Akhilesh ji, before we shift our focus to... Uh, because there's a long list, perhaps, of the candidates who could be replaced. So the BJP, like always, will be going in for fresh faces. What is the basis of this? Is it anti-incumbency against the local candidate? Or is it also some other basis on which it is being decided? But first up, uh, there is this speculation that Prime Minister Narendra Modi, in order to show the seriousness of uh, the party, that they are very serious about 130 seats in southern India, could contest from a south uh, a seat in the southern India as well. Uh, will you be able to guess on that? No, the sources have completely ruled it out. They are saying that it, the question does not arise. I mean, though the, it's, it sounds very tempting as far as the BJP is concerned, if Prime Minister Narendra Modi contests one seat from North India is Varanasi and another seat from South India, maybe one seat in Tamil Nadu. So that 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 way BJP can balance both South and uh, North India. But the BJP sources also said there are other sides of this decision also. Like uh, if you do that after winning both seats, you have to give up give one up. seat and which seat you have to give up. Yes. That's, that will send a very strong message. That's right. Because the next time, uh, very immediately, you will see in the next two, three years, UPS election will be there. That's right. So he cannot. And it will not to, be the same thing like yeah. giving up Baroda and if continuing as Kash continuing like with so, a mem member so of this the question does not party. arise as far as the BJP is concerned. They are saying very clearly that PM will. Con contest only for Maranasi. But of course, Prime Minister Narendra Modi, as we are talking today, is in South India. He was in Kerala, in Tamil Nadu. And that uh, his, I think, third or fourth visit uh, beginning this year. So that very really clearly shows that how PM Narendra Modi is targeting uh, the South Indian states, especially because BJP knows it very well that in the North India and also in the West India, the party has reached to a saturation point. That's right. So if it has to uh, reach that number of 370, it needs some new catchment areas. Huh. Where are those catchment areas? They are basically in the South, South India. India. And in 2019, interestingly, uh, the BJP had 130 only 30 seats in total of 130 in these uh, six southern states. Uh, so the party realizes that the challenge is in southern India. And will they be able to break that bastion of sort, which is of Dravidian politics, such as Tamil Nadu? Uh, now the next question is that on Saturday, when there was that meeting, uh, the Prabharis, also the core committee members of several states were in attendance. They were meeting Mr. Shah and, and, uh, and Mr. Nadda, one after the other in groups. Uh, Akhilesh ji. So, so are we to believe that in the first list, it will be likely that will be Bengal, uh, Uttar Pradesh, 
Kerala, Maharashtra, Karnataka that could find their names? And will it be mostly of those seats that the BJP lost in 2019? Well, there are 160 seats, uh, a list which has been prepared by the BJP, where party either lost in 2019 or won with a very thin majority. So party has been focusing on those 161 seats, in fact, uh, for the past two years. Various senior, senior ministers, they've been given the responsibility uh, to strengthen the party cadre in those uh, seats where the party considers itself to be weak. And uh, we've been told by the sources that in the first list, which is going to come likely come <laughs> on uh, 29th of February, uh, 90 to 100 names are likely to be there. And it will be a mix where the BJP had won last time, like the sitting MPs, and also some MPs, uh, some seats where the BJP lost last time. So it will be a mixed kind of a uh, list. And of course, BJP, as uh, you know very well, you also covered BJP in government for so many years. So you know it very well that the BJP does not want to take chances. And hmm. to beat anti-incumbency, party denies ticket to very sitting yes, MPs yes. and MLAs also. Yes. So in the last uh, Lok Sabha elections, we have seen that around 100 MPs hmm. were denied tickets. So the similar formula can be repeated this time also. Hmm. And largely in Uttar Pradesh and hmm. states like Bihar hmm. and Madhya Pradesh, in North, especially in North India, where BJP has 90 to 100% strike rate, in those states, BJP is going to deny various sitting MPs tickets. So. Uh, that will have MPs worried because that will be an end of political journey for several of them. But I mean, BJP actually is not concerned about that because, you know, you, it's about winning the election. Yeah, as today you can see in Uttar Pradesh what's mm. happening with mm -hmm. many Samajwadi party MLAs actually voting for the BJP. Yes, they so really that, will give, that will be a big moral booster for the BJP. That's right. And we also seen that in Himachal Pradesh, which is Congress ah. states, there's states, there are reports that there is a lot of cross voting happening. Imagine. So that that very clearly shows okay. that how BJP is on a high pedestal right Okay, now. so there is one uh, one uh, speculation again. Uh, in order to showcase that the BJP is looking at Southern India very, very seriously, is there a possibility that Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman and External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar could contest? Well, I do not think so. Just like uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is not going to contest from South India, these two senior ministers, uh, External Affairs Minister Mr. Jay Shankar and Finance Minister Nirna Sitaraman, they are not likely to contest. Though uh, Parliamentary Affairs Minister Mr. Pala Joshi had made a statement yesterday in uh, Bengaluru, he said that these two ministers will be contesting from South India. Mm. These two are basically uh, they are member of the Rai Sabha. Their term is. Uh, uh, Jay Shankar is from Gujarat and yes. uh, uh, Nirmala Sita from, from Karnataka. Karnataka and the term is still there hmm. for the next three, four years. So they actually do, there's no necessity for them to contest the Lok Sabha elections. And uh, uh, the top sources have also indicated today that uh, as far as Nirmala Sitaraman is concerned, there's no question of her contesting because so far there's no proposal. So I do not, I do not think. But of course, there are minister, other ministers who, yeah. who will be contesting because they are not renominated to the Rai Sabha okay. apart from. Uh, Two ministers, Mr. Ashwini Vaishnav and El Murugan, no other minister. Has there are been. nine ministers whose uh, term is expiring right now. Hmm. But uh, out of nine, only two have been renominated. That means the other seven will other be. Other means like Dharmendra Pradhan, yes, Rajiv Chandrasekhar, from Bhupan a constituency Riyadha, in yeah, Odisha, uh, Mansuk Mandviya, all Mandala. of them are going to contest. contest from various constituencies. So okay, so let's wrap up this conversation. Um, Akhilesh ji and I will continue to brief you regularly about what are the developments which are happening in the BJP and the government and in other political parties in the run-up to these elections. So what we can say now is 29th is when the Central Election Committee of the BJP meets. Prime Minister will be in attendance at the BJP headquarters. Top leaders will be in attendance. Uh, and the first list is likely to come out. Akhilesh ji, your last word. I think so on uh, maybe 29th or maybe on the first of March. Uh, well, okay, first that of maybe, March. Yeah. That maybe th th there's a possibility that, uh, but even before the elections are announced, the first list will be there. This is what sources have indicated. It was supposed to take place in the last week of January. Mm. They already delayed it for one month. Mm. So sources are telling that the list is ready. It just needs the approval of the Central Election Committee, and that is likely to take place on uh, 29th. All right. Thank you so much for watching.